Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Biz Tips. So a few weeks ago, I attended a mastermind and I randomly meet this guy and he starts telling me about all the things that he was doing. I'm like, holy cow, I got to bring this guy to the show. Jerry, what's going on, man? <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Drew Burke. Thank you so much, man. So before we get started and what you guys is going on, which I think is pretty awesome, who is Jerry? <laughs> sure, sure. Um... That's a loaded question. Um, you know, I, I never really tried to put labels around me. I just, um, I'm a creator. Mm -hmm. um, I am a father. Um, I am a husband. Uh, so ultimately, that's me, right? So I, I, I love arts. I love technology. Um, I'm a foodie as well. So that I think that kind of sums uh, uh it created a path for me in my life that I just traveled on and said, stick to it. Right. And it yeah. just designed that journey around for me. I love it. I love it. Now. And I know you have a, a beverage brand that you started. Do you want to share a bit more about that? And how, how did you even get into that? Um, I, like I said, I think it's, you know, in life, sometimes things come full circle around. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, we have a beverage brand. Um, but, you know, it really started off, I guess, um, for me way back in the beginning um, when I decided to go to school for fashion merchandising. Okay. Um, and I feel like that was really just the beginning of, you know, my entire career, um, how my career turned out, you know, and everything else. But it led into where we are today. Um, do I think it's where we will be 10 years from now? Of course not, right? Yeah. But it's part of the journey. I love it. I love it. So I remember uh, when we last spoke, you mentioned, you know, how you came to New York and <laughs> tell us about that story. Cause I thought that was pretty amazing. How'd you get started? <laughs> sure. So um, at the beginning of my story, um, I recall I was designing this window um, mm -hmm. in school and while um, I guess, you know, figuring things out and I'm in my element and Remember, I went to school for that uh, uh, merchandising. Yeah. And merchandising on the creative side helps you think about how to grab customers' attention the mm -hmm. minute that they walk through that door, right? Mm -hmm. And usually they always say those first five, 10 seconds is the That's most it. important thing. So, um, as I'm inviting people to come to my first window design, um, you know, my mentor walks in and he goes, wow, this is great. This is amazing. Um, you should come work for me. Right. And at that point I was like, oh, that sounds <laughs> great. You know, what does that look like? And he goes, yeah, do what you do, but on a computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm like, yeah, I don't know nothing about computers, right? <laughs> um, but to kind of like fast forward a little bit, we wind up uh, doing projects for Sean John for five wow. years. Uh, we did his, literally the very first uh, stop for SeanJohn.com. I remember, you know, him talking in the meeting, he's talking like, um, he's expressing how he wow. wanted his site to be the next Amazon, but the fashion, right? Yeah. Um, he was always talking that way. Like mm -hmm. he, he wanted to be the best um, and always wanted to bring our culture, right? Mm -hmm. The the culture present um, in the fashion world. Um, so it was, it was really nice. It was an amazing experience. But that for me, right? turn into what they call today user experience um uh user interaction and user experience design on the web right wow. so i started off really as what we used to call back then um information architectures yeah so i came in and i was helping and working with the designer um and working with the brands also right mm -hmm. on where should certain things go yeah 
what colors should they be, right? This is now applying the brand um, look and feel to the website. Um, what colors should there be? When you click on the button, how does it change that color, right? What colors should we pick based on how it will trigger an emotional experience? Um, that's, there's, that's a science in itself alone. Tell us about that. <laughs> what, what, what are some of the colors that people not even think about and how it impacts emotions? Sure. Um, you know, we'll pick some beloved brands, actually. Yes. Uh, if you look at the Apple brand, most yes. of the branding around that, their branding colors are like, their products have their own color line, but the branding colors on the website, on their materials, you look at, it's mainly of a flat, uh, a nice, shiny black mm -hmm. um, or a white background, very clean lines. They yes. don't really have or add a bunch of stuff to it, right? So they're all about um, ensuring that you create that focus. Mm. And when you go to that website, immediately the first emotion was, oh, wow, this is so luxurious. Yes, yes. <laughs> it makes you feel like high end. <laughs> very high end, right? So that's that luxurious feeling. Um Another another branding element um, that you'll see a lot of people use is that uh, if you look at let's say for example a website like um, uh, the Amazon website yeah um, what's the number one color that people remember with Amazon it's either yellow or orange <laughs> there you go there you go yeah right right but they do have a blue in there too right um, you know what? but the I thing about the blue. That's crazy. Huh. That's interesting. Um, the blue sometimes it disappears, but but here's the thing. Orange is almost as if um you're it's about like safety. I feel safe with this person. I feel oh, comfort. Man. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get taken care of. Like it, yeah, it yeah. creates that safety feeling. If you look at a lot of pharmaceutical brands, right? Yeah. <laughs> they follow that same mantra. Wow. Uh, they'll have some of the orange, they'll have some of the blue, they'll have some of, you know, so colors in effect literally affects our mood and it affects how customers portrays a brand. So, you know, learning that earlier on, yes. I brought that to basically what I was doing in New York City. Um, early on in the early 2000s. That's amazing. I, I'm, let's go, let's, let's go fast forward, right? Because that knowledge, I'm pretty sure you're applying it now to your beverage brand. T tell us more about that beverage brand, because to me, that's fascinating what you got going on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to say that the beverage brand itself is like a combination of like all of the work that I've done in the past. Okay. And it, when I look at it, I see little tips and tidbits there. I see everything. I remember, for example, I had an opportunity to work on Indy Ari's first album. Mm -hmm. And you I don't know if you recall, but it was like all pink, completely pink. Like she wanted, I remember the website, everything to be pink. She wanted yeah. the, the packaging to be completely pink. Um, like it, it was like, completely pink right and i remember going back and forth hey we can't do all pink we gotta have this we gotta have gradients with this blah blah right but um i understood why and that always remained with me right it, it's that softness it's That's that right. um uh uh almost like almost like a love affair right mm. that you create with your consumer with the customer mm. right and for our brand, if you look at it, you'll see one of the cans is a pink one. Yeah. Um, and that can, for example, it's lemongrass, it's mint, it's eucalyptus. Those are some of the base of the ingredients. And that's all flowers and yeah. plants, right? They're, they're really nice, beautiful flowers. So... All that emotion and joy, what's the first thing that comes in mind is pink. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So 
<laughs> oh, this is amazing. Like I never thought I was gonna learn about colors and how to impact your emotions and it yeah. helps, you know your overall brain on how that experience is the brain experience that comes from it. So exactly. I'm curious, right? Um, you started this beverage brand what in 2020? We started um in 2020, officially launched in 2020, um, right in the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, tell us about that. How was that process? And now I think you're like all over the nation, right? It distributed. Yeah, different. yeah, we're in over 35 states, um, yes. 11 airports, and growing. Wow. Um, we're in a major. Uh, I can't announce it yet because okay. it's going to be we're gonna be making a, a big announcement, but a major basketball team. That's um, awesome. Yeah, um, they're, they're we're we're launching with them. We contract sign. They already did one of their tastings also at the stadium. So Congratulations! This is just huge. It's really nice. Thank you, thank you. I'm thank curious, you. Really... I, because there's a lot of people and business owners with like different brands that want to get into the airports, but you know it's challenging. How did you overcome that challenge? What was kind of like some of the steps you took that got you into like eleven airports? It, it, it was very challenging. And I think um, I'll give you an, uh, a, just a quick insight and yes. I won't put too much information out there, but the biggest thing is the actual cost to get on any type of store shelf that has high foot traffic yeah. is not, it's not free. It's Got not it. free. So Got it. Once you understand that, um any of the hot spots that you would like to be always yeah. remember it's not free right because yeah, this is a high visibility place now you have to come to the uh uh understanding of what it takes mm -hmm. to actually be able to sell in that location so um it's less about finding the right people uh, uh because you know, if you walk through these airports, literally, you can go to any of these stores, the one that speaks out to you, go into it. Hey, where do you get products from? How do you know what's yeah. the name of this company? Right. And usually that company is the retailer that you have to sell into. Ah, uh, OK. That is a gem, my friend. That right. is huge. And when you're selling into that retailer, they might have let's say, I don't know, 200 locations, 30 yeah. airports globally. And now you have to choose based on their locations that they have available, what can your supply chain supply? You Got have to it. be very careful about that because the airport is a huge opportunity. Yes, It's a huge market. There's millions of people going through it every single day right yeah. so even if you were to capture one percent of that it's a huge number yes right so you need to make sure that you're able to supply that continuously uh -huh. so, so now go go ahead go ahead because i have thoughts i, I definitely want to hear it <laughs> go ahead <laughs> so it's less about um really you know how do you get the right company it's yeah. really thinking about can your product survive in this type of location? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole brain chain process. It has yeah. to be around your brand. It has to be around the financials. There's a lot that goes in through that. So, you know, when you ask me that question, I'm like, wow, that's, those, these are great questions, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I could actually really state the entire yeah. thing over here. <laughs> no, 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 that's <laughs> awesome. You, you know, you have to come through these like, um, Pros and cons, essentially, right? Definitely. And it's not just simple pros and cons. Oh, I'll get visibility. It, because, it, again, it might cost you, say, half a million dollars, for example, to yeah. be able to get into all of these locations. And if you get there, how do you make that money back? Yes. How long will it take you? Yeah. Um, and all of these things you have to be able to understand. So. Uh, that's some of the stuff that you you and your team need to come to uh, an understanding of what that looks like. Now, I'm curious because you mentioned supply chain, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't fully understand that. You, you, you have a beverage brand, so you got the manufacturing side, then you got to get it distributed. 
like tell us about you know just a little insight on what that supply chain looks like because if you end up you know like 11 different airports and you're not able to sustain the growth then you know then that's another challenge so yeah yeah <laughs> so for us our supply chain i want to say is extremely complicated mm -hmm. um and and i'll list some of these complications for you um and they're different for everybody yeah right there and it's different for also even if you're in a beverage business maybe you're in a drop shipping beverage right so that will be totally different huh. for you than for me right Okay. So there's a lot of var variations for me that's different. So if you want to do some drop shipping and you say, hey, um, I'll take drop shipping to Mobby in the Northwest region, right? Yeah. So what I do helps basically the larger network of what we have going on. Gotcha. I, I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. So that's why our supply chain is a lot more complicated. Now, let me give you a little bit of insight. Um, part of our process is we purchase all of our raw ingredients directly from a company that my mother owns, actually. Um, she has been in the natural products industry for the past 30 years. Yes. Um, plus, plus. And she makes, she's a doctor. She's a naturopath yes. doctor. So she makes a custom blend of our herbal teas. Um, but let's rewind a little back. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> now you have to understand something, part of our recipe, these things were given, passed down to her from her mom. Wow. So a lot of the recipes that we're using, that you're realizing there's a history behind that. Yes. And with that, there's also supply chain that comes with it as well that we can't, you just can't deny because yes. that. You know, in our, you know, I grew up in Haiti and the way things work in Haiti, it's almost as if like how we see it over here with families, but mm -hmm. in a larger scale. So, for example, it's like, oh, if you make it out of the hood, right, you bring all your friends with you. And that's how it is in Haiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so as my grandmother, um, and just to give you a quick insight, I won't get into it too much. Our family has an amazing rich history. My grandmother was um, was literally abandoned by the time she was 15 with 10 younger siblings of hers. Wow. And she wind up making candy and selling it in the streets to uh, create an opportunity for herself. And it was doing that that brought basically her entire family out of poverty. Wow. Um, and to give you an idea, my parents, my mother, her daughter grew up in the States so by the time she had her daughter, her daughter was already well off to grow up in the States and do all yeah. these things. But it wasn't until I was born, they decided, no, let's start bringing the family back to Haiti. Mm. So let's go back to our supply chain. Yeah. Remember, everybody that all of her friends from the hood, right? Yeah. It's about how do we bring back all of our friends and help out, out, right? So everybody from her neighborhood, basically, she either did business with them, right? Because now I can buy products from you. Yeah. Right? I can buy raw ingredients from you. And yeah, we create yeah. a network. So this network is generations down, family down, you know, for years and years and years. So um, we only buy from our network, which is women Love farmers. Um, and they're located in various locations in Haiti, right? But part of our network also have deep history behind it. Mm. Um, and some of that history helps solve the problems around forestation, right? Um, wow. Some of it helps solve problems around joblessness and all these things. But it all started with my grandmother and, and what she was doing back in the day. And That's we're it. still translating that today, right? Now into a global vision. That's amazing, bro. Wow. Now, I, I, I it's crazy. I did not know you know, that part of the story. So I, I was fortunate to meet your mom. She's amazing. And, Thank you. And, <laughs> and now listening to this part, that makes sense. And it's genius. You keep in the, you know, you keep in the growth in the family and, yeah. and that helps build the right network 
because now you already have the trust in the relationship. That's yeah, yeah. And but but you know, even though yes, we are a family business, but you know, our network is also not family. Many of them, they're yeah. friends of friends of family. They become our family, but this yeah. is how we create the opportunities for others to Everybody continuously. Else grow and come, you know, and do things. So, um, you know, some, some of these people, um, you know, I know a woman farmer, she has, you know, she doesn't write or read and she was able to pay for her kids to come to college in the United States. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Right. So it's little things like that, right. That yeah. we're part of, right. And being able to be life part changing. of those things. Yeah. Life changing, life changing. And we're, and you know, we're okay doing it in, in, in quiet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, you, what is that one small biz tips you would share with any business owners listening to this that you think can help them in their business? Sure, sure. So um, one of the biggest things that help me be where I am today is, is two things. One mm -hmm. of them is taking advice and speaking with various different people um, from different backgrounds, different uh, uh, places in their lives, right? Yeah. So just to give you an idea, for example, one of my number one testers are my kids. My <laughs> kids, you know, gave me feedback on, on my website. And just to give you an idea, if a kid that can't read or write can navigate yeah. on a website, right? That means you created a user experience that's easily transmittable to anybody that doesn't anybody have to read else. or write. Yeah. <laughs> so very early on, I understood that and I always applied that. So my kids were always my early testers and seeing how they respond to certain things. So um, getting advice from various different groups of people and understanding what that advice means, right, mm -hmm. to that person um, is extremely important to be able for you to decipher what they're saying. The next thing is strategizing, mm -hmm. right? And it's also part of that advice, right? So once you receive yeah. all of these advice, how do you strategize around this and say, let's build a plan to go X, Y, and Z? Because here we are, you know, three years later um, in over 35 states That's and amazing. some major key retailers, um, Sprouts Nationwide, um, you know, we're over, in over 11 Eleven thousand doors, eleven thousand retail doors, right? So that's that's it's huge. That's a lot, and we have products everywhere. Um, so being able to do that in three years, something had to be done because yeah. we don't have a huge team, we yeah. don't have millions of dollars of funding. What did we do right? Well, it's part of you know our strategy making process. We spend a lot of time planning and building out on what do we want to go how do we do it when we get there yeah. and implementing that plan now i love it i love it how do people get in touch with you what's the site for Mahabi that people can check out give us the details on that sure sure so you can check out my website mabit.com m-a-b-i-t-e-a -E um however i'm easy reachable um, on my Instagram. So you can follow us at mabi.t, M-A-B-I dot T-E-A on Instagram. Um, you can reach out to any of us anytime. I promise you, even though we have tons of people in the platform, I still look at all the messages, reply <laughs> directly from my profile. Wow. Like, I'll, I talk to everybody, even people that, you know, say, hey, this, I experienced like, a lot of people ask me, so, you know, I literally run customer service because I want to make sure I understand every single person's issues, um, problems that happen. So all, all of our team members like are part of that process because when we all understand what customers are saying, mm -hmm. it really helps us understand what we should be focusing on, what we should be doing. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jerry, for coming on. This was amazing. Please reach out to him. Check out my VT. I had it. It was amazing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you again. It was a pleasure connecting with you. Thank you so much. And looking forward to uh, speaking next time. Cool.